You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Here ends the reading. I see the God. This is Ichman Manal. Read the psalm for us. Psalm 99. Good morning. Good morning. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows his handiwork. One day tells its tale to another. One night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their song has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep has he set a pavilion for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The law of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, to, is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey on, in the comb. By them also your servants enlighten, and in keeping them, there is a great reward. Who can tell how often he offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, and the world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the life of Derek, and ask that in this service, the wife and family members will find comfort Together we join with them in thanksgiving for his life and his service. Bless us all, we pray that we will always be mindful that we are your children, witnesses to this world of your goodness. As we remember the right now, so fill us with thanks and with grateful hearts that we may be glorified through Jesus Christ who lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. Mrs. Flora will now read a special poem, I think it is, I'm not so sure. Yes. A tribute to the Honorable Sir Derek Aitman, to Mrs. Kim Aitman and family, from the members of St. Francis Anglican Church. You will be lift, you will lift up your face without shame. You will stand firm without fear. Job 11, 15. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Acts 11, 15. These are scriptures for Derek's date of birth, born on November 11, 15. D is for Sir Derek Aitman, one of God's anointed and authentic sons who was divinely ordered to always listen to the still small voice of God within in order to do his will. E is for the endearing love Derek had for God, his family, his country beliefs, and humanity. R is for his regal and royal spirit that resonated in everything Derek did and for his return to God's heavenly kingdom to praise and worship his heavenly Father. 
E is for living a worthy life in accepting God as his Lord and personal Savior so that he can live with God eternally. K is for his kind, caring, compassionate, loving spirit and a keen inner knowledge of the importance of living each moment to the fullest by allowing God to let his light shine through him. We all love Derek, but God loved him more. May he continue to rest in God's everlasting arms in peace and rise in glory with his ancestors. May God continue to bless each of you with strength of spirit at this difficult time from the members of St. Francis Anglican Church. Thank you.
And there is light, please, Mr. Lincoln. Today, caught me off guard simply because I was not aware that Derek had passed. And I'm not finding fault with anybody. I'm saying this because this is exactly how Derek would have done it. Why I say this is because Derek, I had the utmost respect for him. Here's why. Whatever he had to say, whether you were a teacher, because I taught him at St. Michael's College, and that is the reason why today I deem it an honor to make the observations that I am making today. You didn't do anything that went contrary to what he, what I would say, had envisioned because he got excited over <coughs> the lessons that came his way and he never looked back. Today, more than ever, I am thankful that I can say without any doubt that if nobody believed what he said, I did because, as I said, I taught him. And having had the opportunity to see exactly the metal that he would have displayed over his life has manifested itself in the person that he became. Today, more than ever, while I feel a kind of sadness that he has gone, I am thankful also that where he is, they have better be prepared for Derek because he will make the truth known whether St. Peter want to hear that or not. And today more than ever, I am saying this with the kind of love, if anybody would read any other things in that, I am sorry if you misinterpret what I'm saying. I am saying that having had the opportunity to teach him at St. Michael's was an honor because he was always respectful and that didn't come easy because St. Michael's in those days you had to be tough as a teacher much less a student but Derek smoothed his way I join my thoughts and all that he represented with the family. You all probably didn't know that there was this side of Derek. Derek was the kind of person that you did not wrong his paper because of some grammatical error. He would come and he will challenge you, which was something that I look forward to because as a teacher, I was always aware that you had to make sure that whatever you had to cross out or put a line under, you had good reason to do it. And I am certain that if St. Peter thinks that he will get away with anything, Derek will be right there. And, and, and that might sound frivolous, it is not. Here's why. I always look back with, the, with deep respect that I had for him. Had nothing to do with his political whatever. It had everything to do with the fact that he always said, Mr. Gilly, 
at that time when all the other young students at St. Michael's had the feeling as if they, they could say what they liked to you because you were, what I would say, young. I think that is one of the hallmarks of a true, true Christian today. I joined with the family in saying that I know that where he is, and I say this not out of any kind of frivolous intention, I am saying this, if St. Peter believed that he will run anything contrary to what he represented, Derek will tell him about it. And I am conscious, definitely, that that is the person that I would know. Today, I join with members of the family in giving God thanks for allowing Derek to have crossed my path. And even though, even though I taught him, he taught me also. Because what he did, quietly, if he was not satisfied with the, with the remarks that you would put on his paper, you had to defend it, and that is what made him the kind of person that I ended up respecting. None of the other students would do that. I joined with the family today, not with any kind of remorse. I am delighted to have known him and what he represented is something that I had a little, a little bit of setting the tone for the direction that he had traveled. I joined with the families today to say, you might believe that you have lost, you have lost a loved one, but I'm saying to you that what I am saying you could Bible that because if it were not so, I would have said so too and Derek would have been the first to say, did Mr. Gillett say that? You can believe that. Today then, I am saying to you, let us give God thanks for the life and testimony of Derek Aikman. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen.
And then there was the court of the men, Jewish men. And then there were courts of the women, Jewish women. And then there were the court of the Gentiles. Those are those people who don't were of Jewish, or not of the Jewish faith. And then outside of that was the courtyard and there was the marketplace. Now this was important because the people, the men and women or men selling were not doing anything technically illegal, I want you to understand. What they were doing was that they had for sale the instruments whereby the children of Israel would offer sacrifice to God. When they came to the temple, they came to atone, to make amends for their wrongs. And they, in those days, they didn't have motor cars and bicycles and so on. It was primarily by foot. And under Jewish law, at least every Jewish family, at least once a year, within a 20 mile radius, was required to go to Jerusalem, to the temple, to make a sacrifice to God for a tomb for whatever their sins are. And one of the things I love about that is that it says that you were never so poor that you could not at least offer two turtle doves to God in thanksgiving and sacrificing and atoning for your sin. So this was more or less a rough sketch of what was going on. So you imagine, outside, you are buying to come into church or into the temple to offer the sign. And I was teasing a dear friend who I haven't seen in a long time because of COVID. And I won't tell you what I said to her. But the sister said, but father, and people say, no, I said that. <laughs> and I said, yes, I said, but because she's my friend, I can say that to her. And you know, I don't mean it in a negative way. But isn't it the truth that we say, the look of a kind of church today? In Mossy Array. That is not welcome. Or as we, we are not willing to share a hymnal or a prayer book with them. Not for them, this one is not looking at them as well. That's not what it's supposed And so the children of God needed to commune with their God. They wanted that special space. That's what worship is about. That's what the church is about. This special space set aside in which we can commune with our God. This special place in which we can unburden ourselves before God. In the Old Testament, we find where if, um, um, Samuel's mother, she went to the temple every day praying and even the poor priest thought that she was drunk. And at, she said to the priest, she said, at nine o'clock, no, no wrong stuff up here. Of course, you're not on the boom, but, um, <laughs> but in those days, in those days, no, no, wrong shop, open. You read it. Said, I am poor of my heart because I was a child. And all the other women for my husband have children. And they're calling me all kinds. It's right in the Bible. You, know, you don't need another world or days of our lives. <laughs> or Facebook these days. It's right in the Bible. And the priest had to apologize and pray with her. And the first child that she was blessed with. So she took to the temple when the child was weaned. That is my understanding. It is correct me. I might have it wrong. When it, when it stops up. Took the child to the temple and gave the priest the child to be well. After that, her womb was open and she had about five other children after that. But it was that fervent prayer before God. And so we need to create the environment whereby people can pray to their God in the way that they know how, the way that they want, because the pain is real. And therefore, when it's worship time, we must make certain that that space is available, available to our brothers and our sisters. We must enable them to talk to the Holy Spirit. We must enable them to feel that they are an integral part of what we do. I must say that Derek believed that. And here, you know, we have done some what I call 
unusual things. And he used to say to me, I think God did that St. Francis would try that in a fire. I said, go anywhere else, you know, I know it. And I would simply smile. And, but that is the environment that we want to create. And I pray God that you will always create that environment for worship. It is not about the priest. It is not about the bishop. It is about the presence of Christ, our Savior, in our midst. And how we help each other. And here at St. Francis, he has been a part whereby you can tell the priest if he's wrong. And that's not a problem. The only thing I ask and I insist, we don't be rude to each other. But if you are not comfortable in worship this week, next week, the third week, you know, come back to vote me. Therefore, you've got to share your thoughts in order to build up the body of Christ. And that is what Jesus was concerned about. People were not given the opportunity. Of course, in those days as well, as I said, you had special position for women, special position for, in the church itself for men to sit. Well, you know we are now, what we, this week is Women's Month. Mm-hmm. And I am horrified to say that in this community of beliefs, and the church is not exempt, let me make that perfect clear. We have not always been honest and fair to all women and all children. And you and I must demand we are the children of God to treat each other with the greatest of respect and integrity at all times. I love to say these days you have to get permission to even kiss somebody on their cheek. You should demand that. You should not simply allow, well, that's what a man behave. That's what they want to hear. That's what we want to hear. But well, that is not necessarily right. And we must demand. A lot of our boys don't know how to treat their wives and their girlfriends because they see from us too often how we behave. And we are not willing to tell them that they are wrong either because they may they bring the good note. Or that's our only support. It is wrong, it is wrong, no matter who does it, where, when, how, and why. Down through the church's history, we have not always been faithful to this God. I love to remind church people that in Canada, about 10 years ago or thereabout, the government of Canada had to amend its constitution to save the Anglican Methodist Roman Episcopalian, um, uh, Wesleyan, the Baptist, and our four other um, organizations from bankruptcy. Because over their history, they have abused children and women way back in the 1800s. And they took them to court. And some the courts ordered somewhere in the region of $90 billion had to be paid by all these churches to try to make up or compensate for the wrongs and the hurt that they have inflicted upon these children and, and women. I say this to simply to say, you need to stand up. Like Jesus, he said, no, 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 this is not what church is about. But I can't tell Father. Why can't you tell Father? Why? You don't know God. Never brought from heaven, at least that I know of. This morning, as we come to worship, it is my prayer that you and I will always seek to make this place truly a house of worship, where we'll be, we'll be welcoming, where we'll be caring, where we will listen, where we will pray with and pray for. And we have gotten one of the wonderful things I like to tell my friends. One of the things I love about coming to St. Francis is that not only we do crazy things that 
that ordinary Anglican church will never do. But our people have so matured that when we say, let us pray for Mrs. Aikman, they don't say, the way you pray for <laughs> No, 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 no. That's not how we do it here at all. It is by faith that we present our sister, our family, whoever it may be, before the throne of mercy. God is going to take you. You don't need to know the details. That's the reason why, you know, visiting the sick is so challenging for a lot of us. Because when we go, God, God, I saw your look. And you know, I <laughs> that way they die. You know, the dark person, after you want no medical person. No medical person. No, it's like when you have death. And I've told this to Kim and to several persons. When you have death in the family, you know, your friends put you on a yo yo. You know that is on rope. Remember that? Because everybody will come and the way it happened to them, and the way it happened, and how it happened, and then, and then. All you want to be there, and then you tell them the story, and then you get all worked up, sad, and then you quiet down for a while. And by the time you sit down, another two come, and get the way it happened, and they were here. They just call me the way it happened to her. They say, I that roses yesterday. That's not the way. Just simply to be there to support, to love, to care, to give encouragement. What can I do to help you? Say a prayer with you. But too often, that is the furthest thing from our thoughts, much less from our action. And so this morning, as we come together to celebrate Derek's life, we come to thank God for his goodness and for his mercy to all of us. We pray especially for the children who could not be here this morning because of circumstances. But I pray and we all pray that Cain will continue and the children to walk in his way and to do his will and to provide the environment whereby we can all as the children of God come together uplifting his name that Jesus is our Lord and our Master. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us in a moment bring before God Kim and the children who are adults in their own right now. And that becomes difficult for us here at St. Francis because we have watched them grow. And for Kim as a mother, her many days of tears, missing both Derek and the children who for varying reasons have to be up away. Pray for the extended family members that they will give, continue to give her the support and her friends. We pray for this congregation, for all those who continue to do their part in proclaiming Christ in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for this community, of all of the frontline workers, the nurse of the village, the police of the village, the chairperson of this village, and those who live and work herein. That they, by their example, will lead our people aright. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for all congregations of this community, whatever their faith is, that they will proclaim simply the love of Christ, to use church to teach, to guide, and to proclaim God's unconditional love for each one. We have somewhere to go when we err. But we have someone who has loved us and has already forgiven us. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And now we shall sing the hymn in 40 days and 40 nights. What is
just been asked to remember an agility in our prayers as she prepares for surgery. We pray for her family and the doctors and nurses who will have her care and the pain and anguish that this brings to every family. Pray that God's healing grace will surround her and that His will in her life will be accomplished. All others who may be known to us at this time that needs His healing grace and our love. Lord, in your mercy, Father, we bring before you these petitions today for Annie and for all others who have a need of healing for the Aikmans as they deal with their loss to for their one. Above all, we pray that you will hear our prayers, that we will humble our hearts genuinely before you in the throne of mercy and receive that blessing which you have promised to all who believe. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 